Gibbo presents. It's Gibbo, and right now I'm joined by Nasheen from Innocent Sounds, who in the early hours of this morning were defeated by Young Hawk at Albany Manor in Brooklyn, New York. Nasheen, you got caught up in an incident after the clash had come to an end. Since then, there's been various reports on your health. Clear things up. How are you doing? I understand you had to get some stitches. Hey, what's up, Gibby, man? Respect and manners. Um, well, right now, I'm doing very good, you know what I'm saying? It was not that serious like, oh, you know, the media was making it seem. You know, people always like to twist things and make it more than what it is. But um, I'm okay. I'm very. I'm doing very, very good. You know what I'm saying? Um, the situation was just a situation that happened after the clash. It wasn't between me and Jamie or nobody else. So let me just clear that up. It wasn't with Jamie. It wasn't with no member of Jamie's crew. Our, you know, our innocent or Jamie was going at it. Jamie won the clash and it was a situation after the clash. But I'm okay. I'm doing very good. Let's talk about the clash itself. Coming into it, what did you see Jamie's strengths as and how did you plan to neutralize them and defeat him? Well, um, coming into this clash, we took this clash seriously you know, because, you know, uh, Jamie's a very good opponent and very smart selector. And um, his, his strategy that he used last night, which he played first, Young Hawk played first, Innocent played second to the whole night. Um, he, he he pushed out very early in the clash, trying to gain the momentum and the fans on his side, which he did very well. So we was kind of playing off of the defensive, which didn't really work to our advantage, being that, you know, he, he touched some, some points and some spots in the clash where it kind of helped him. So I guess him taking the early lead for the first two rounds, even though the third and fourth round he didn't do as good as the first and the second round, but we still couldn't capitalize on that, gave him the edge in the dance. Big up Jamie, you know. He win the clash for and square. Big up Jamie. Big up young guy. I spoke to Jamie earlier, and he said his strategy was to play the tunes that you like to play early on in the clash so that you couldn't play them back. Do you think this was a good strategy for him to adopt? Well, it was a good strategy for him and for the fans that know Innocent. Because, you know, he, he, he did that very smartly, which we wasn't really planning to play those songs anyway. You know what I'm saying? We want, we, we had a different strategy, but it didn't work. But it, it, it worked good for him because that's a good execution plan. You know what I mean? Um, coming into this clash right here, um, I would say, because Innocent performance last night was very low. Nothing to the standard of Innocent and apologize to innocent fans for that. But coming into the clash, I had some per I personally had some personal issues which I wasn't really in the zone coming into this clash like I normally was. So I guess being that, you know what I'm saying, leading up to the clash and that and I was in that kind of a zone, you know, but we still had to go to with the clash because the clash was booked already. Um it just made what he did so much more better, you know what I'm saying? So him playing the songs that, you know what I'm saying, he feel that innocent normally plays. Kind of worked out for him still, you know, from the fans' point of view. But we wasn't really planning to play those songs anyway. If we had a chance to play them, we probably would have played, but we was not planning to play those songs. We were just doing what we normally do, just come to work, you know what I'm saying? But it worked out for him, though. I'm sure you prepared for the clash and took him seriously, but was he better than you thought he would be? No, he, he normally, he did exactly what I thought he was going to do, because like I was telling the people before, in the first rounds, first, second, second rounds, I was when he was going on very good, and I was telling the people that you know by the third or the fourth round he's gonna he's gonna slow down, which he did. The third and the fourth round he did slow down, but we couldn't just find that gear to overcome that. You know what I'm saying? So that's what kind of make him. But he was the same Jamie. He's a normal Jamie. You know what I'm saying? That that he didn't really surprise me. He did everything that I know he was gonna do. You know, he's a very smart selector still, very smart selector. So I'm gonna give it to him. But anybody know Jamie? Jamie's a man where, you know, him write down things and in between rounds he writes down things on piece on a paper you know, and take notes on them something there. It's something where we see him do last night and he do it all the time. So he had his thing put together, but he didn't do nothing that I did not expect him that he was not gonna do. He did everything that I know he was gonna do. 
I just, I never, we never really counteract it the right way we were supposed to and get the crowd back on our side in the later rounds when the crowd was ready for us to come back into the dance, you know? Does he get the ratings he deserves? Do you think he's New York's number one sound at the moment? Um, well, I don't really know who's number one, New York's number one sound, because yeah, I don't live in New York City, you know what I'm saying? I, my son represents Florida. So I mean, you just focus on my son as the number one son all around. Win or lose, just can't to, cause focus on Innocent being the number one son. Ratings, as far as ratings, I don't think nobody don't rate Jamie. Everybody rate Jamie and rate what Jamie do. You can't say, you know, anybody who said they don't rate Jamie, then they don't really know about music and don't really know about the sound clash culture because he's been doing it, obviously, for a long time and all up him name in other business because you have a lot of sound who's out there for a long time that's been doing it. But some of them don't really have the effect or them used to have back in the days. And he's still doing it right now from, I guess, what, 90... But 94, 95, 96, he's been doing it and still has his name relevant. So at the, as far as the ratings part, you cannot... Anybody who says not rate Jamie and rate Young Ox on, they're living under a rock, you know what I'm saying? They have to rate what the man do, you know what I'm saying? I have to ask you about your recent and highly publicised online back and forth with another selector, <laughs> Tony Mataron. With Mataron, yeah. <laughs> First off, just put things into perspective. How long have you known Mataron for? I've known Mataron ever since I was a little kid, ever since about 15, 16. I know Mataron. I don't know him back then. I met him in my later years, around like say 20, 21. But I've known of Mataron since I was like about 15, 16. Because I used to go a lot of clashes in Birtmore Ballroom when Ali's was playing. And he was one of the selectors, one of the few selectors, but the most influential selector in in, in my career, you know what I'm saying? Who I used to look up to and, you know what I'm saying, watching the business or whatever. So I know him for a long time. And before the recent falling out, did you consider him a friend? Yeah, me and Mataran was always friends. I mean, we had a little disagreement at my birthday party last year in Miami which he was booked for. We had a little disagreement, but you know, we never really had no big disagreement. Me and him don't talk on the phone every day and them something like that. Although he's my friend, we never, we don't really talk on the phone every day or like see each other all the time, but I consider him as my friend, yeah. Can you describe the sequence of events when you first saw that wig video? Where were <laughs> you, what were you doing and how did you react to it? No, actually, let me tell you, me just clear it up right now, see? Me and Mataran don't have no vibes. He probably have a vibes with me now, but I don't have a personal vibes with him. It was just something that I seen and just spoke my mind on my personal social media page. And he didn't like it, so he went and started ranting and raving like a diva. But um, I was actually home and somebody had texted me. I was like, yo, you see what your friend Mataran is doing on Instagram? Um, he used to follow me, I used to follow him, but after the event, he blocked me, so, you know, I can't see what's going on on his page, but somebody had texted me and said, um, do you see what Mataran is going on with on his Instagram page? And I said, no, I never see. Because he might just look after dark show, which mis I was watching it when he first started the after dark show last year, but I just stopped watching it because it started getting boring to me. So the person texted me, and I went on his page, and then I seen that he was doing skits with um, wigs and stuff like that. Not one skit, but more than one skit. So to me, you know, they kind of find it disturbing because it's not like he's a Oliver Samuels or he's somebody that's playing in a play. You know, he's Mataran, the top selector slash DJ, if you want to call it. You know, we had this image and this persona as burning out certain things that's in dancehall that were not agree with dancehall culture, that don't mesh with dancehall culture. And then... You turn around and be a hypocrite and you're doing something that you used to burn out. Not saying indirectly burn out wigs, you know, but he was one of the vocal MC slash selectors in the business who used to burn out certain things in that business. Then you come back around now and you start doing something, I guess, because you're trying to keep your fan base up or whatever, which in life you can't really do everything to try impress people just to gain your fan base or to keep your fan base still stand up for the culture that's not a part of dancehall culture so i seen what he was doing and 
I just wrote a little post on my Instagram page, my personal Instagram page, not on nobody else's page or in the public. It was just on my page saying, I can't believe Tony Matter and the veteran selector who we know from King of these days, who used to burn out certain things, come back and start wear wig now. It not look good. And if anybody who don't, I'm not saying if Matter have a problem with it, I'm saying if anybody have a problem with it, you know, them can go whatever, whatever. So, um, I guess he got mad, but what I think he should have did, him could have did call me and say, You're not sure me feel a way about it. Just like I could have called him and tell him some matter and not like about a week something there. But me never text it was that serious because I never curse him or bun him out. I just put a little post on my page and said, You know, can't believe some matter on a resort to wig now. So, one of probably one of his little group of them or one of them female, they must call him and say, You know, so when she right on him page, then he must go up on theme Instagram page. And say him have somebody for burn up on him after that show that same night. And then so it said so done in the night, he met this big video. Start talking about oh me about him, man, and all them something which me not understand. You know me for so much years, and you say me I have friend for so much years. And you are talking about me about him, and so if me is about him, and you wouldn't be hanging around me, me wouldn't be your friend. So that was a lie. So me the feel say like him try to take a low blow at me. I try to make up these one bag of lies. So what I did, I just made another video the next day. I made a video the next day now. Post a video on my Instagram page saying certain things about him and try to make him know him can't call me down like I'm calling everybody else. You know? And then him go back now. No, before he went back and make a video, Bounty Killer seen my video and reposted it on his page, which me and Bounty never have a, 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 a situation where we was talking about this. Him just see the video from my page and put up and say, Nashin Fire speaks his mind, but one of dancers minority with a fag mentality, Tony Mataran or whatever. And Mataran seen that and I think that's where it blowed up. And he got so mad, you know, he started making more videos and dissing up me and Killer, which made the stop make video because I only made one video about him and I wasn't making no more. But I said, I tried to make him know, say, you know, me not fear him or whatever, because he make a video about me the night before. Born to kill the same video, repost it. He got mad because a couple months before this, him and, no, well, not him and Born to Killer. Him by himself make a song about Born to Killer, this up Born to Killer and Vegas. But the song never gonna work because Born to never answer him. So I guess he was more mad that Born to never answer him about him song, but Born to Killer repost my video. So it get him mad, you know what I'm saying? Because then, when Bounty Killer repost the video, it draw all this attention from so much people. You know what I mean? So it made matter and feel some type of way and that's how it escalated, you know? Nothing bigger than that. It was nothing big like, oh, everybody try to make it seem. Which now my ears say him attack, say him not chat back to me and him not be my friend no more and all these something which is not a problem with me because I don't really beg friend. But just voice my opinion and him feel away about it and it just blow up into this one big thing. And then that's it. It's done for me now still. Have you spoken to Killer since he retweeted your posts? Well, actually, I'd spoke to Killer about a week after that. Because the star, the star of Jamaica, the newspaper in Jamaica had linked me, and they said they wanted to do an interview with me about the situation with me and Matarana. I give them an interview, and when we give them an interview, Killer did um, WhatsApp me. After the, after the interview came out in the star, Killer WhatsApp me. I say, yo, big up yourself, you. Nice interview, because you never really get ignorant or you never diss up matter and you just tell the people them what you feel about the situation. So, good interview. And that's the only conversation we had about it, nothing else. Surely the publicity in the mainstream Jamaican press must have been beneficial to you and Innocence. Have you noticed your Twitter and Instagram followers go up since the article? Have there been more bookings coming in for Innocent as well? Well, our bookings, we was already booked up all the way until June, every weekend, before all of that. We was already booked up, you know, because like I said, you know, we have our own credit in the business anyway. We put enough work, you know what I'm saying, and people recognize that. So we was already booked up until June already. But yeah, I'm starting to get a little bit more followers upon my social media, which is not really not, not a big deal because it's just social media. I don't know none of these people in real life, so... It's not like it do nothing big for me and probably people who never know about Innocent and know about me as far as like worldwide probably started to try to find out who we was and 
do some research on the sound and who I was or whatever. So yeah, so it probably give us, you know what I'm saying, a little more strength, but not more than to where that a lot of people wanted to book us no more than not normally, because we stay booked, you know what I'm saying? We've been we've been booked for the last ten years constantly. All when I was in jail. We've been booked, you know what I'm saying? So it's not like say it's something to where that we're gaining a high power because my son have natural talent on it. You know what I'm saying? The selectors on the son have natural talent. You know what I mean? We juggle and we clash. So it just give like a little plus to to the worldwide people who never know about we start doing some research about we. That's all it was. Nothing big. So what are the chances we see you and Mataron solve things musically and clash? You know what I said? But I think you will ever see the clash, you know. Me, I, I don't have no problem clashing matter on, you know, because we actually clash matter on already, you know. The first big boss me get in the business, you know. In the sound business was, um, what year was that? Dapper, what year was that? 2000, what, two, three, yeah. 2002? The full oil in the Miami? 2004. Four. Yeah, 2004 in Miami. Um, I know you're familiar with fully loaded in Jamaica that Charenberg used to keep every year. You're familiar with that show, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, Mataran and Firelings Clash. Okay, well, 2004, she tried to keep it in Miami. The only time she ever tried to keep it outside of Jamaica, she kept it in Miami. One time in Bayside, Bayfront Amphitheatre in Miami. That's where the, the, the big shows used to keep. And she kept fully loaded. And that's the first time. Me and Mataran was good friends at that time too. But me decided at that time, say, but they want to protect the career of the song on a different level. So we, we kind of shoot off a of Mataran at the Fully Loaded. The Fully Loaded was us, Mataran, Super Twitch, Metro Media, DJ Khaled, Jabba, One Love from Europe, um, Left Side and Esco when they used to play music. No, I think about three more other songs. It was just a song, a song event, you know, because that's how Fully the world. So she do it in Miami. And we alter every song upon the bill. Just shoot off a matter on the night. Uh, we are matter on up going one for one and everything. And we left a good impression upon the people. I mean, beat me by one song. But we, we beat him up bad the night there. That was actually the night where most artists and certain people in Jamaica start recognize Innocent. Because that was the first time me meet Bounty Killer after that fully loaded. It was 2004. I went to Jamaica after that. I'm a meet Bounty Killer on a solid engine and in my time I say, yo, I'm here the fully loaded at Miami and you deal with Mataran good. At that time, Mataran and him wasn't talking and that's where, you know, it all started for Innocent in a, upon a higher level. But me clashing Mataran is not new because I'm a clash him already. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't really like semi free of clash Mataran. It's not, not, not because you're friends, you know, have a musical clash. But I think he took this one so personal where he's not going to want to clash. He's not going to clash me because ever since the thing happened on Instagram and it got so publicly known, a lot of promoters call me for the clash, but tell them I will do it. Them call him, him say him not going to do it because him not clash me, him not give me no fame or not like that, which means I look no fame for Mataran, you know? But I don't think he would do it, but I would do it, but I don't think he would do it. Is he still a real war selector or has he lost the appetite that he once had for a real battle? Well, I think, me personally, opinion, my personal opinion is, I think Mataran lost his, his appetite for playing music on a whole, not even Clash alone, juggling too. Because he hasn't been performing in playing music, selecting wise, like how he's supposed to, like how the Mataran we know. Mataran nowadays just come to the people and party and talk for half an hour and play music for 20 minutes that is not playing music so i don't think he's relevant in the selected tick like how he used to be excuse me you know what i mean but matan is a person where you can never underestimate either because he's one of those persons that can do anything at any time and being that he has such a big fan base he know how to manipulate people so we can't really say him wouldn't do good in a clash you know what i'm saying if him put in mind the matter with me you know if him put in mind to it him can't do it but ego won't make him do it because he feel like he is above that and feel like he's bigger than that. You know what I'm saying? One clash that you will be involved in is War Climates, which takes yeah. place next weekend at the Appleton Sports Complex in St. Elizabeth. 
You're going to be going up against Sound Trooper, Breda Hype, Pink Panther, and Red Heat. Can you give me a brief scouting report on each of your opponents? Um, Ready, to my knowledge, is a good sound. To my knowledge, they're one of the they're one of the leading clash sounds in Jamaica right now that's active. Young youth, you know, but have a good look of fan base now. Um Trooper, you know, the veteran, the ultimate veteran for this whole song cash thing. He's been doing it from Jarrod days. You know what I mean? Panthers in it, you know, Panthers are a real war specialist. I think about ten time or eight time world clash champion. Brother Hype, you know what I'm saying, is a good sound from out in St. Elizabeth. Good vibe sound. Um, but that don't mean that we fear them. If you know innocent history, innocent go up against some of the biggest sounds and some of the youngest sounds in the business, win or lose. We're just going to Jamaica to do a job like we normally do. You know what I mean? But we're not taking none of them lightly or feel like say, we have a go there and take them lightly. We're taking this very serious. You know, so then better let's get for them thing together, which to my knowledge, made for understand say, I'm the most on that dance. All of them is focusing on trying to kill me and my son, which is not a problem to me. You know what I'm saying? Bring it on. But it's going to be a good clash, though. Which of those four sounds do you think poses you the biggest threat? Tell you the truth, all of them pose us a big threat. None of them is no special than nobody. You know what I'm saying? All of them have them element of surprises. All of them have them experience to a level. So all of them is a threat. I'm taking it as all of them is a threat to innocent. So what we is going to do, we're going to deal with all of them accordingly. Because you have to understand, say, we're the only Jamaica foreign based sound on that bill. Meaning, you know, we have a sound of Jamaica, we have sound of America. So us as the foreign selectors going to Jamaica for this clash, we're going to be the one that, you know what I'm saying, going to be outnumbered by far, because they can basically team up as a Jamaica leg sounds and try to get we out. You know what I mean? But I take it very, very serious. None of them is not no special threat. All of them is a threat to we. Is war climate coming a bit too close to last, last night's clash, ideally? Would you have liked more time to prepare? No, I mean, both these clashes was booked at separate times, months in advance. You know, we know that the clashes is one week apart. You know what I mean? We took the clash because we like to clash too. We are very, we are juggling some, but we love to clash. It doesn't matter what the space or the time between the clash them. Plus, it's in two different time zones, two different countries, you know what I'm saying? It's a good look, you know what I'm saying? We're just trying to bring back clash, nothing serious. And then at the end of March, you're going to be heading over to Europe for your European tour. Now is your chance to mention the cities and the countries which you're going to be passing through. Um, tell you the truth, I can't remember the countries and the cities right now off head. I would have to look at the schedule. I don't have it in front of me. But what's some of the places we're going that part? We're going to um, Geneva, Geneva, Munich, Munich. I can't remember. We have a couple more places. I can't remember them offhand, but it's a it's a one it's a ten day tour, you know what I'm saying? And we're gonna be playing I think nine days out of the ten days. But um just follow us, follow Dapper Lee on Instagram at Dapper Lethal, follow me on Instagram at Nasheen Fire, follow Juxi on Instagram at Juxi Fire, follow um Neely on Instagram at Neely Innocent on Instagram, or you can check out my Facebook page. Nasheen, Innocent, Dapali, Innocent, Juxi, Fire. And you will get all the updates of, you know what I'm saying, where we're going to be playing in Europe. And it's a big one for us still, because this will be the first time Innocent is going to that side of the world. And we're looking we're looking forward to this, you know what I mean? Because it's a big, big thing for us right now. Because we love to play music, you know what I'm saying, for the people that make them enjoy themselves. Despite what happened last night, we always we love music still. And we just want to put out there, what happened last night was not between us and Jamie. We and Jamie did not have no fight or no dispute. You know what I'm saying? It was something otherwise from the clash. Happened after the clash with some other people. It had nothing to do with the clash. And big up Jamie again.
But yeah, we love to play music for the people. We just love to play music. We're a youth. We're born in the music and we love it. So us going to Europe is a big thing. And I just want to say big up to the Europe fans that's looking forward to Innocent coming over there for the first time because the promoter has been giving us a good feedback and saying that people are very excited to see us come onto that side of the world. So big up to Europe. Nasheen, most importantly, it's good to hear you're okay. Commiserations about last night. Best of luck for next weekend in Jamaica, and I'm sure you will enjoy the European tour. Thanks a lot for your time. Bless up, Giba, man. It's always a pleasure to do an interview with you. Keep doing the good work, and big up to the fans. Them. We love Innocent Sound in England. We're coming up soon. Soon line up our England tour coming up very soon, so let's look out for, for Innocent in England coming up very, very, very soon. And big up yourself, Gibbo. Thanks and respect, yeah? Gibbo, 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 Gibbo.